Let's do this one now. Uh, it says, uh, show the reaction between oxygen and hydrogen to form uh, the molecule water. So again, the first thing we're going to have to do is write the, or draw the Lewis dot structures of the atoms, hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, so if we look at where they are on the periodic table, we'll know that hydrogen has one valence electron and oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. Okay, so remember, so what are um, these elements? Hydrogen is a non-metal. So remember, it can be on, it can be like a group one or a group 17 element. In this case, it acts like a group 17 element. And oxygen, of course, is a non-metal as well. So when we have two non-metals come together, what do we form? We form a covalent bond. And unlike a uh, ionic bond, a covalent bond is the sharing of electrons. Okay, so these guys aren't going to actually transfer the electron like the last problem we did, they're going to share it, okay? But the problem is here is hydrogen, it only needs one electron to fill its valence uh, shell, but oxygen needs two, okay? So hopefully you see that, right? So it's only got six to make an octet, it needs eight. So in other words, that should give you the clue as to say, well, if this compound is made up of only hydrogen and oxygen, then there must be something that we're missing here. Okay. And the element that we must be missing is another hydrogen atom because we only need one more, uh, uh, one more electron to fill up that space in um, oxygen. So again, we can draw these Lewis structures with the dot here, 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 whatever is the most convenient to uh, build your molecule. So since we've got these two non-metals coming together, we're going to form a covalent bond like we said. And remember, since we're showing the motion of just one electron, we'll do what we call these fish hook arrows. And since we're doing a covalent molecule, we'll show two of them meeting in the middle, not transferring one to the other, but actually meeting in the middle. So they're actually each donating one electron to what we call this covalent bond that's going to be formed. Just like here, donating one electron. One electron, if this helps you. Eventually we won't show this anymore because this fish hook means the same thing. So when that happens, and again they're not transferring them, they're sharing them, and they're like holding hands now, So the oxygen and the hydrogen, instead of having those dots, they have a line between them, like that, and a line between them like that. This line is a covalent bond. Notice we didn't show anything like that in the ionic compounds that we made. Also, we've got these four electrons here on the oxygen that didn't do anything. They stayed the same. So we got to show them over here. So the oxygen now has eight electrons around it, but some of the electrons are different than other, uh, some of the other electrons. So it's got four electrons that are located in the two bonds, because remember, bonds are made up of two electrons, right? These electrons, that are the four electrons that are in those bonds, we call bonding electrons. Okay? Or bonding valence electrons. These, is, these are all in the valence shell. And these electrons, on the oxygen, 
we call non-bonding valence electrons or non-bonding electrons. Okay, so if it asked you how many bonding electrons are there around the central atom, you would say four bonding electrons. And how many non-bonding electrons, you would say four non-bonding electrons. So this molecule has two covalent bonds in it. Notice and remember how we figured out that there must have been another hydrogen in there. Okay, we'll do a few more of these and you should get pretty good at it. This is known as the Lewis structure of the molecule. Eventually we'll show um, through Vesper theory what the molecule actually looks like in three dimensions and how to depict these types of molecules in, on a two-dimensional surface. So a molecule isn't flat like a piece of paper, but we have only chalkboards to write on um, until the advent of technology, I guess, and now we can demonstrate models and stuff in three dimensions. But um, it's still very good and uh, very useful to be able to draw things in two dimensions and then depict them in three dimensions on a two-dimensional surface. So, cool.